Obviously, we are now in the year 2022, but in this video, I'm going to be talking about all of my sales from the last two weeks of 2021 and sharing with you my end of the year sales number. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on a bunch of reselling platforms and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you everything that sold in the last two weeks of 2021. I'm going to be sharing where the items sold, where I picked up the items, how much they sold for, and I think this is really valuable information for any reseller just so they have an idea of what's selling well for other people and hopefully also gives you some insight as to what brands you should be picking up. And then at the end of the video I'll be sharing with you my year-end total totals as far as how much profit I made in the year 2021. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first week of sales that we're going to be talking about is December 20th through the 26th. And for the entire week, I only sold on three platforms. And they were my three main platforms, which are Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. So we'll start off by talking about December 20th, which was a Monday. The first thing to sell was over on Poshmark. And it was this Nike dry fit shirt, just like a pretty basic you know, short sleeve graphic t-shirt. Um, it was in a size extra large for men. It came in a men's thread up rescue box. I got one of those hundred pound boxes. It was not the most enjoyable box to open because there weren't a lot of winners in there, but this did sell for $15. So once you subtract Poshmark's 20% fees and my cost of goods, which was $2.99, I made a profit on that of $9.01. The next thing to sell was over on eBay. And this was a pretty good sale, although I did hold on to it for quite some time. So it was this 525 America Lux, which is a brand that is sometimes sold on the Revolve website. Revolve is like a really trendy online store and they sell a bunch of different brands. Some brands that, you know, we all know and love like Levi's and whatnot, but they also sell a lot of maybe smaller brands that you may not be as familiar with. I think it is definitely worth going on their website and seeing what brands they sell just so you can be on the lookout for those when you're at the thrift store or at consignment stores. But this was a 100% rabbit fur open front vest in a size small. I don't typically pick up for her, but because I recognize the brand and because it was in amazing condition, I just went ahead and picked it up. And it was only $5 at a local consignment store. Again, I've had this for a while, so it's not like it was a quick flip, but it did sell for $80 with the buyer paying for shipping. And so I ended up making a profit on that item of $65.94. I do think I had it priced at like $125 at one point, but given the fact that it had sat around for so so long when I did finally get the $80 offer, I was like, Yep, you can have it for $80. Moving on to Tuesday, which was December 21st, I had a sale on Poshmark and it was this pair of Crocs Sloan embellished white floral flip-flops in a size 11 for women. These sold for $18 and I had picked them up at a local garage sale over the summer, so maybe like end of summer, early fall. So they had been listed for at least a few months and I got an $18 offer on them on Poshmark. I think I had them listed for like 25. So I went ahead and accepted. I had 289 into them them, like I said, so I made a profit of $11.51. I have been selling lots of women's shoes in size 11 lately, so apparently that is a bolo size of shoes for women. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was another pair of shoes, and it was this pair of Talbot's Vintage Beige Suede Loafers in a size 6.5. These sold for $21 with discounted shipping because that was a Posher VA sale. It is a Chrome extension that I have. I have it set up so that they can automatically send out offers for me four minutes after someone likes it. An item and that's what happened here. I had a dollar and 81 cents into these shoes. I got these a while ago at a local consignment store but because I had shopped with them before in bulk when I shopped with them again maybe like a year ago to date um, they gave me another really great deal so I had a dollar and 81 cents into these. That was my average cost of goods. There was some wear on the inside if I remember correctly. There was some cracking in like the leather lining but they still sold for 21 with discounted shipping so I made a profit on those of $12.53. Those did also sell once before, but they got returned because I had put the wrong size on them accidentally, but they sold again, and I think they actually sold for a little bit higher the second time, so I was totally fine with, you know, getting the return and then just trying to sell them again. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari, and it was this Anthropology Maeve Monaco red printed long sleeve dress in a size medium. This was something that I picked up not too long ago. 
at the same consignment store, I think. This time I had $9 into it, but it sold for $41, and so my profit on that was $26.41. And like I said, I probably only had this listed for like a week or two before it sold. I am currently really mad at Mercari. <laughs> you know, they are starting to ask resellers or people who sell on Mercari in general to fill out W-9 forms, which is fine, which is great. Like we should be doing that as resellers and paying taxes and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm not okay with is the fact that it takes them forever to review W-9s once they're submitted. And for me, at least, I don't know if you run into this, but for me, they are not allowing me to accept or counter any offers until they are able to review my W-9. But it's been like over a week and I have had the most number of offers come in, I swear to you, in a week span since they have cut me off from being able to accept or counter offers. Like it is infuriating. So I even tried to see if I could just drop the price to their offer because I was comfortable with accepting their offer, but it doesn't let them do it. It says, I'm looking at the comment right now, the person who I tried that for said, it still just says view offer, won't let me buy it like literally losing out on so much money right now. Mercari, get it together. Moving on. So on Wednesday, December 22nd, again, I had a few sales on Poshmark. The first one was this pair of soft patent leather T-strap slip-on wedges in a women's size seven. These again sold for $21 with discounted shipping because of Posture VA. I'll put my coupon code down here if you want to try it out yourself. I have Posture VA send out offers for me, but I also have it share my closet for me, which was the main reason why I got it. And it has really been quite amazing. And with my coupon code, you can save 20% off of your first payment and they offer like a two week free trial. So nothing to lose to just at least try it out, right? But I, again, had a dollar and 80 cents into these. These are from a big bulk buy that I did like a year and a half ago at this point. And so I made a profit of $12.54 on those shoes. The next thing to sell, this is a Bolo brand. Like I had never heard of this brand and I don't know, like I thought they, I thought the quality of these pieces were like, okay, but my God, they sold really well for me. So the brand is LCR Knitwear. I got two pieces by this brand and I think my brother gave them to me. So they're just these really intense, like thick, knit pieces, but they're not even really made of amazing materials. Like I sold one a few weeks ago that I think had some wool in it. This one, I don't even think had any wool in it, but it was this black faux leather panel moto zip sweater jacket in a size extra large. I remember thinking when I went to list them like, oh, I bet they'll go for, you know, $25, $35. But obviously I looked up comps because I didn't know anything about the brand and was shocked to see that comps were really high. This one I listed for $75 and it sold outright for my full asking price after getting a ton of interest. And so I made a profit of $60 on that because my brother gave it to me for free. So if you see this brand, LCR Knitwear in the wild, I think it's worth picking up. Even if you're like, I don't know, this doesn't look like it's really that well made. It's like not even real leather. It's not really like any great materials pick it up. It's worth some good money. The next thing to sell was not a very good sale. It was not as good of a sale as the last one, but it was this Alfani, which is a brand sold at like Macy's. Regular fit blue contrast stripe long sleeve shirt in a size extra large. This was just a very basic shirt that I got in a men's thread up rescue box. It was at 100 pound box. It sold for $10 with discounted shipping because of Pasha VA, and I had $2.99 into it, so I made a profit of $1.60. You know, with my McDonald's app, I can still get a large fries for that amount, so I mean, I'm good, I'm good. The next thing to sell was over on eBay, and it was this vintage Abercrombie & Fitch gray hoodie with like a kangaroo pocket on the front, and it was in a men's size small. So lots of men's stuff sold this Wednesday. That sold for $49.99, with the buyer paying for shipping. And that's something that my sister-in-law gave to me for free that her brother had given her. And so I made a profit of $43.64. Vintage Abercrombie, especially for men, is a huge bolo, especially if it has like the Abercrombie spell out. There is just something about Abercrombie. And I know like Abercrombie does okay in the States, but Abercrombie is still pretty huge overseas, especially in Asia. So there's just something about that Abercrombie, especially the stuff from like the 90s and early 2000s. So if you find it again for cheap, I think it's definitely worth picking up. Moving on to Thursday, which was December 23rd on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Minnetonka 
Aztec print fabric upper faux fur lined moccasins in a size 8. These were so interesting because the uppers were in amazing condition, like basically looked like they hadn't been worn. But then like the inside faux fur lining was rough, like it was kind of gross. But they still sold for $17 with discounted shipping because of Pasha VA. I only had $1.27 into those because I got them at the bins in Indianapolis and there you pay by the pound. And so these were super lightweight, they were under a pound, um, but my average cost of goods for that trip regardless was $1.27. So I still made a profit on those of $9.87. And they only took maybe a couple weeks to sell. On eBay, I sold this Radley London brown leather zip top pocket crossbody bag and this sold for $50 and I do think this sold to a viewer. I'll go ahead and put their name down here. And I think it sold to a viewer because I featured it in this video right here. It's a video called Sarths, which is support a mm, support a reseller this holiday season. I think that's what it stands for. My friend Chelsea over from the Monarch Alley YouTube channel had nominated me to do it, and this was one of the pieces that I featured. And I think someone saw that video and came over to my eBay store and was like, I saw that bag and I really wanted it. So it sold for $50 with the buyer paying for shipping. I had $12.99 into that bag. I found it at a local Goodwill. I don't really go to Goodwill that much anymore, I feel like, but um, I just happened to be looking around, saw this really cute bag, ran comps on it, and was like, Yep, this is totally worth it. And so I made a profit of $31.34 on that. So thank you so much for your purchase. I super duper appreciate it. And I hope that this is your new everyday bag because it's amazing. The next thing to sell was this Gap Coral sleeveless maxi dress in a size extra small. This sold for $12 with the buyer paying for shipping. I had 80 cents into it because it was something that I picked up at a local consignment store when I was shopping in bulk and that was my average cost of goods. And so I made a profit of $11.07 on that. This is one of those pieces where, you know, it's just a testament of why as resellers we need to not be greedy or we need to not hold like emotional attachment to pieces. Not that I had like an emotional attachment to this necessarily, but for some reason I just thought it was so cute and so amazing and I just was not willing to go down on the price on this. And so I'm pretty sure I've gotten multiple offers for way over $12 and I went ahead and you know tried to counter them and people were like, no, you crazy. <laughs> like the offer that I'm sending you is a good one. And now here I am accepting a $12 offer because it's been more than a year and I still have this dress. Don't be like me, don't be greedy, accept reasonable offers. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari. <laughs> and it was this Guinness official merchandise rugby striped polo for men in a size large. This was again something that I picked up at the Indianapolis Goodwill outlet. Someone bought it for $28. My cost of goods was $1.27 and so I made a profit on that polo shirt of $22.82. On Friday, which was December 24th, Christmas Eve, I had a decent number of sales. On Poshmark, I sold this pair of Madewell Langford High Rise Wide Leg Cross pants in a size 26. Those sold for $42, again, with discounted shipping because that was an offer that Pasha VA had sent out. I had $7.99 into these. I picked them up actually over the summer when I went with my family to New York to visit my best friend, and this was one of the items that I picked up while I went thrifting there. So I made a profit of $23.15. This was another item that, you know, I've had listed for quite some time, but this time it worked in my favor to hold out for the right buyer because I got a lot of offers for way under $42. So I'm glad to have finally moved them at that price. The next thing to sell was this pair of Nike Fit Dry Gray Athletic Pants in a size medium. Just very basic like loungewear pants. They sold for $10. That was the offer sent to me. I went ahead and accepted because I only had 80 cents into them and they had been listed for forever because they were from that big bulk buy that I did from a local consignment store. So I made a profit of $6.25 on those. On eBay, I sold this pair of Sperry Topsider Halyard 2i boat shoes in a size 9M. Those sold for $18. They were promoted at 3% and the buyer paid for shipping. I had $1.80 into those because they also came from that big bulk buy at the local consignment store. So I made a profit of $11.96. Sperry's for me are slow sellers. They 
they will sell eventually and not for a ton. So for the most part, I'm leaving them behind now unless they're like super special and in really, really good condition. And then on Mercari, I sold this Matilda Jane blue plaid coming to town dress. Um, I don't remember what size it was in, but it sold for $22. I don't remember exactly how much I have into it. So I'm going to guess five. And so I made a profit of $13.86. This has been listed for quite some time. Matilda Jane dresses for women can do pretty decent, but more and more I've been finding that they've been sitting a little bit longer for me. So they're no longer something that I'm willing to pay more than like four or five dollars for. You know, if they're on like super clearance and I'm getting them for really cheap, I think I might still make that investment. But otherwise, it's just not a quick enough flip to justify spending like eight to ten dollars on, which I used to do before. So on Christmas Day, I had one sale and it was over on Mercari and it was this J. Crew rainbow striped dolman sleeve dress in a size small. This was such a fun dress. It was just so bright and it just made me happy to look at it. It sold for $30. I had $5 into it. I picked it up at a local consignment store. They were doing like a 50 or 75% off sale or something. And so my profit on that dress was $20.83. I think I had this listed for under 24 hours. In fact, I mean, I like, I remember talking about it on Instagram, but I think it sold like within hours of being listed. And I think it's because it's just such a joyful dress. Like you look at it and it just makes you happy. And we all need that right now. <laughs> like there's very little to be happy about lately, I feel like. So I'm very happy that someone has this in their life now. The next day that we'll talk about and the last day of this week is December 26th, which was a Sunday. I sold on Poshmark this pair of Intimately Free. Is that what it's called? It's like the Free People Intimates line. Um, it was this pair of printed sleepwear shorts in a size extra small. I had picked these up for myself at a Goodwill um, and I wore them you know maybe for I don't know like a year or something like very sparingly because they were so skimpy like just too much of my butt cheek was showing every time I wore these it was just not comfortable like I was not getting good sleep in them so I just went ahead and listed them they sold for ten dollars I made four dollars and fifty nine cents on that sale because that was a Pasha VA sale. The last sale of this week was over on Mercari again, and it was this Adidas, the go-to tee. Um, it was a Chicago Bulls shirt, and it's a Derrick Rose on the back. He was the point guard for the Chicago Bulls a long time ago. What is it like? eight, nine, ten years ago. I forget what team he's on now. He's reunited with Tibbs again. That was the coach who coached the Chicago Bulls back in the day too. Um, I loved watching the NBA during that season of my life. Like it was just something that my husband and I did with a group of our friends. Like we would watch every single Chicago Bulls game and I have such fond memories of that time of my life. I don't watch as much NBA anymore but I watch enough to know that the Bulls are currently ranked number one and it's pretty exciting. They're having a great year. DeRozan is amazing and it's just it's been really fun. Despite the fact that so many players are out for like every game because of COVID, it's crazy times right now. But this shirt sold for $11. Someone was feeling that same sense of nostalgia as me. So they got this for $11 and I made a profit of $9.28 because I believe that was something that I got for free. I could totally be wrong, but that's what I'm going to go with. So I'm not going to break down all of my numbers for you, but I will just tell you my net profit per platform for the week since we have a whole nother week to talk about. So on Poshmark, I sold 10 items and I made a net profit of $151.05 on Poshmark. On eBay, I sold five items, but I made more money because I sold bigger ticket items. So I made a net profit of $163.95 on eBay. On Mercari, I sold five items for a net profit of $93.20. And so in total, I sold 20 items for a net profit of $408.20. Not awful. You know, I missed my goal by like $250, but it was okay because even before we had gotten into December, I had already met my goal for the year. So everything in December was basically like extra bonus money. So the second week that we'll talk about is December 27th into January 2nd. So on December 27th, which was a Monday, I just had a couple Poshmark sales. The first one being this pair of Lauren Ralph Lauren Tally bow rye black patent leather ankle boots in a size 10. So again, a lot of like bigger women's shoe sizes selling, but these sold for $30. I had $9.99 into them. Um, I took my daughter to her first gymnastics meet of the season in a town maybe about an hour away. It was a crazy coincidence because I also needed to be in that town 
for a choir festival thing for my school. But anyway, we had a little bit of time to kill. There was this huge Goodwill and we only had time to look through maybe like a couple racks and just a couple areas. Um, but I did pick up these shoes and so I made a profit on them of $14.01. And I'd say they were probably listed for like two to three weeks. The next thing to sell was this John Deere embroidered logo, pink and green cap. This is crazy. And I actually picked this up for um, a very specific purpose. I was going to do a collaboration with someone and it just kind of fell through. Um, so it was just kind of laying around and I had paid $1.99 at a local Goodwill. So I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and list this because it's just taking up space. And probably within a few days of me listing it, it sold for $12. It was a Posture VA sale, so that did include discounted shipping. So I only made a profit of $4.60. But still, like what that showed me is that there's a market for these kinds of hats, even though in my opinion, it was not the cutest thing. I don't know. The next day that we'll talk about is Tuesday, December 28th. I had three Poshmark sales. The first one being this game. Again, another thing that I featured in that Sarth's video, and it was the game Brony, which I think is by the company Matagot. I might, I don't know very much about these kinds of things, but it was like a multiplayer board game. It sold for $25, which I think was an offer sent to me. I can't remember if that was my full asking price or not. And I had a dollar and 92 cents into it because I picked it up at a local garage sale. So I made a profit on that of $18 and eight cents. I felt really bad though, because the person who bought it from me left me a four star rating and they said, Hey, I just wanted to let you know that when we got this, like three out of the four corners of the box were broken and some of the pieces had fallen out. Like it just wasn't packaged very well. And I do remember having a really hard time finding a good box for this. It was too tall, like too wide to go in one of those um, USPS game boxes. And every other box that I had was just really big. So I remember putting it in a box that had a lot of space in it, but I put a lot of those like um, air pillows in with it. So I thought it was good to go, but apparently it really was not. They were like, I really wish you would have used like tape or something to keep the box closed. So I feel really bad. I know a lot of people will talk about how they don't want to sell on eBay or they don't want to expand outside of clothing when it comes to reselling because they don't want to deal with shipping and they don't want to make those kinds of mistakes. I know I feel the same way too about shipping out things like glass and, um, you know, just really delicate items. Sometimes though, the best way to learn is just by doing the dang thing and making mistakes. And again, when I shipped that box out with the game in it, I really thought I had done everything I needed to. I thought I was gonna get there in one piece. There was no part of me that even worried that I had not done a good enough job. And yet here I come to find that I did not do <laughs> what I was supposed to. So it was a good learning experience for me. I'm really thankful that they took the time out of their day to, you know, leave that note and let me know. So now I know for the future to do a better job. And I do feel bad that it was at the cost of this person's package not arriving in the condition that, you know, it was in before I sent it out. But, um, you know, hopefully I can learn and grow from this. And that's the best that we can do. So moving on, I sold this pair of Cole Haan green leather mule kitten heels heels in a size six and a half. These sold for $25. I think that was my full asking price. I don't know. And so I made a profit of $20 because that was something that my mother-in-law gave to me for free. It's crazy because those actually sold earlier in the week. And I believe the person asked to cancel the order. So I did just for them to sell again later. So, you know, you gotta love when that happens. Um, the next thing to sell was another hat. It was this Carhartt adjustable strap back embroidered cap. This sold for $15. I had a dollar into it because it's something that I picked up at a local garage sale. So I made a profit of $11 on that hat. The next thing to sell was over on eBay and it was this pair of Tom's gray knit exterior faux fur lined slide on flats or shoes, again, in a women's size 10. These were very reminiscent of the Minnetonka ones that I talked about earlier. Um, just kind of the same feel, right? Where it's like the faux fur lining. These sold for $20 and they were promoted at 3%. I had $2.89 into them because I got them at a local garage sale over the summer. So my profit was $14.86. Those were listed for a decent amount of time. They did have some uh, like stains on the uppers, but they still sold, still got good feedback. So there you go. On Wednesday, which was December 29th, again, I had a handful of Poshmark sales. The first being this pair of Everlane black capri wide leg high waisted 
pants in a size four. These sold for $34 with this kind of shipping because again, posh for VA. Um, these, however, I had $25 into because a long time ago, I bought some inventory from a reseller friend of mine who was quitting reselling. And she was selling me stuff kind of at cost, maybe charging me a little bit more, but then shipping was also just so expensive. And so it came out to $25 a piece, which is insane. And it was a while ago, like more, maybe like close to two years ago that I did this purchase with her. I think I got like 10 things from her. If I were doing the same thing today, I would never get like these Everlane pants knowing that I was going to be paying the amount that I was paying, but you live and you learn. So I lost 26 cents on this transaction because of my insanely high cost of goods. Don't pay $25 for Everlane. It's, it's usually not going to end very well. The next thing to sell was this life is good blue. Don't stop retrieving t-shirt in a size large. This was so cute. I showed this in a haul video. I don't even remember at this point where I got it, but a $2.50 into it. A viewer named Anne actually found it in my Poshmark closet and purchased it because she was like, I loved it from your haul and I saw that you had listed it. So I went ahead and purchased it. She sent me an offer of $18 on that. So I made a profit of $11.90. This is just such a cute shirt. I love it. So Anne, I'm glad that it's yours and I hope you love it too. The next thing to sell also sold to a viewer named Karen. So Karen, thank you so much. It was this moose buckle brown hand painted Latitan leather belt and it had like eagles imprinted on the belt itself. It was in a size 42 and it sold for $25. I picked it up the last time I went to the Indianapolis bins for an average cost of $1.27 per item. And so my profit on that was $18.73. I believe she said it was for her son and she left me a love note saying that he put it on as soon as he got it and was in love. So that made me so happy and I'm glad that it has found a new home because it was such a cool piece. And another piece that I had featured in my Sarth's video actually. The next thing to sell was a bundle and it was some kids pieces. The first item was this lot of two Under Armour racerback tanks in a youth size medium. These were things that I had gotten for free from a friend of mine and you know Under Armour is a great activewear brand but I knew that like as single listings they would be kind of a hard sell which is why I lotted the two of them together. And then the next thing to sell was this Hannah Anderson pink and gray sleeveless dress in a size eight. Again, that was something that I had gotten for free from a friend. Um, I, I believe someone liked both items. So I put them in a bundle, sent them an offer of $25 with this kind of shipping, which they accepted. So I made a profit of $17 and 54 cents on those items. On eBay, I sold this vintage Lee Sport Blue Indianapolis Colts NFL sweatshirt in a size extra large. This I picked up at a local thrift store for $3.99. Um, it just had a really cool look to it. I could tell that it was vintage and you know, like, sports team stuff like it can do well and I feel like it does better if it's vintage. So this sold for $32. I had the buyer pay for shipping and so I made a profit of $23.48. And it sold pretty quick probably you know within the month that it was listed. On Thursday, which was December 30th, I sold on Poshmark this pair of J. Crew Factory, the bleaker gray like chino pants. These were in a size 36 for men and they sold for $18. I had $4 into them. So I made a profit of $10 and 40 cents. So much men's stuff selling in these past couple weeks. And honestly, like I've been listing a ton of men's stuff. And I feel like even lately I've been selling a lot of men's stuff. The next thing to sell was this Nike AV 15 woven white full zip jacket in a size small. This was extremely lightweight. It was a really cool piece. And it was something that my friend gave me um, from church and we kind of worked out like a consignment deal where I'm just going to sell stuff for her and then give her 50% of the profit that I earn. Um, most of the stuff that she gave me, however, was actually like much higher end pieces, things like, you know, a lot of Marc Jacobs. I'm looking at it right now because you guys, I still haven't listed it, but it's a lot of Marc Jacobs. Um, there was like some Tory Burch, you know, there is some really good stuff. Um, Nike, this Nike piece was probably at the lower end of what she gave me, but it still sold for $35. And this sold to Michelle. Michelle is a viewer and it was so sweet. I think she literally was just kind of like 
looking on Poshmark for things to buy and came across this listing and liked it and then realized that it was my listing. And she said her and her husband watch my channel and when she told her husband that there was this jacket that she liked and it was a jacket that I had listed, he was like, well, you can't send her an offer. Like, you just need to buy it outright. <laughs> and she was like, you're right. So she just bought it at my full asking price of $35. And you guys, I think that happened literally like an hour after I listed it. So it was amazing. Like, it was such a fast flip and I'm so happy that it's going to a viewer. So thank you so much, Michelle and Michelle's husband. <laughs> and so while my profit on that is $28, again, half of that profit is going to go to my friend from church. So I take home $14. And that's one of the things I'm going to try and do in the year 2022, because most of what I'm able to find at my local Goodwills and even consignment stores are kind of more of your bread and butter brands, which I have no problem with, but I do want to sprinkle in more high-end pieces, and I feel like one way to do that is through consignment. There are people in my town who wear fancy brands, and I know that because I see these brands at my local consignment stores, but they are priced way too high at the consignment stores, and very rarely do they put those pieces on sale. I just have to find these people and convince them to sell through me versus these consignment stores. I don't know how I'm going to do that. And I know it's not just those women. I know there are other people too in my area. So I'm trying to like come up with different ways. I was really inspired watching Karina's, um, you know, she's per diem thrifts on YouTube. I will link her channel down below, but I was really, um, inspired to you know try kind of that consignment model too of reselling um, because of her top 21 sales of 2021 video i'll link that video down below it was a really good one but a lot of her top sales were things that people were consigning through her so that's something that i want to try and do and i'm starting with my friend from church so the next thing to sell was um, another nike piece and it was another white piece from nike and it was another thing that sold literally within a day it was this dry fit half sit pullover hoodie in a size large. This, however, I got from the bins. <laughs> so I had $1.27 into it. It sold for $20 and it gave me a profit of $14.73. So the moral of the story here is that people really like their white pieces by Nike. If you find white pieces and they have no stains and they're in good condition, I guess they're worth picking up. They will sell quickly for you. The next thing to sell was over on eBay and it was this pair of Skechers Relaxed Fit Commute Time On Call Black Slip On Shoes in a size 8 and a half. These sold for $29.99. I was honestly a little bit shooketh. I was like, really? These? Okay. They were promoted at 3%. I picked these up at the bins as well for an average cost of goods of $1.27. And so my profit on those Skechers was $21.20. I am still learning about Skechers. I don't know all the ins and outs of Skechers and which ones are worth picking up and which ones you should just leave behind. At the moment, I'm just basically picking up all of it and trying to figure it out. These, I guess, are worth picking up. The next thing to sell was this, again, hat. It was this Chevrolet racing black embroidered logo cruising sports hat. And it had like a big old flame on the brim. Uh, it sold for $10. And it even had a hole in it, like a pretty sizable hole. But it still sold for $10 with the buyer paying for shipping. Again, I purchased it at a local Goodwill for a collaboration that I was going to do with some friends. But, you know, again, it just kind of fell through. So I had $1.99 into that hat. And I made a profit of $8.47. How cool is that? Moving on to the last day of 2021, and it was actually a decent sales day. The first thing to sell on Poshmark was this pair of Circus by Sam Edelman, which is kind of like Sam Edelman's, I don't know if you'd call it diffusion line. I guess it kind of is. It's like a little side brand of Sam Edelman, if you will. Um, but it was this pair of Harlem leopard slip on loafers in a size 10. Again, size 10 and 11 for women have been flying off the shelves for me. But these sold for $35. I had $6.50 into them from a local consignment store. So my profit on those was $21.50. They did take probably like two months to sell and then they randomly sold for my full asking price. So I will take it. The next thing to sell, this one was not a quick sale. I want to say this has been listed for six months to a year. That's a big time frame, but something like that. Maybe not a year, but a long time. It was this anthropology knitted and knotted ivory tunic sweater in a size large. Very lightweight, very plain, very basic, and it sold for $20 on Poshmark. I had about $5 into it, so I made an $11 profit. This is why you should not pick up super plain anthropology because chances are you're going to sit on it for a while and you're not even going to make that much off of it. 
The next thing to sell was over on eBay, and it was this pair of Tommy Bahama linen and silk blend plaid shorts in a size 42. These I picked up at a local consignment store when they were doing like a certain color tag and everything was $3. So I had $3 into these. They sold for $20 and they were promoted at 3%. So I made a profit of $14.20 and they were only listed for like three to four weeks and they sold in the dead of winter. So there you go. The next thing to sell was this pair of Justin black leather pull-on cowboy roper boots in a size 11D for men. These were in rough shape, admittedly, um, like a lot of creasing on the top of the boot where you could just tell like because when the person who wore them previously would walk and they would just kind of crease in the same spot over and over again, like it was basically cracked where those creases were. And then on the bottom, there was literally like a hole in the bottom of the boot. There were so many things wrong with it. So I let go of these for $24.90. That was an offer that I sent out to a watcher. They were promoted at 3%. My average cost of goods because they were from the Indianapolis Goodwill outlet was $1.27. So I made a profit of $16.10, even though these were in rough shape because of the fact that they are a great brand and people like to work in these kinds of shoes. And the person was like, I'm just going to resole the bottom. So I was like, great. These are yours. The next thing to sell was this J. Jill green 100% linen log and look button up tunic in a size medium. You know, I made a video not too long ago that I will link right here on how to make $1,000 a month just selling bread and butter brands. J. Jill is one of those brands that I talked about. And in that video, I talked about how if you can sell those brands for $25 a piece and spend $5 or less, you know, on the items initially, you could make $1,000 in a month. Uh, this is a perfect example of what I was talking about in that video. I was talking about how the only thing I pick up from J. Jill is their linen stuff. And this was 100% linen. It sold for $24.90. And I only had 80 cents into it because I picked it up in a big bulk buy at a local consignment store. So I made a profit on that of $21.36. If you could just pick up a ton of J. Jill linen pieces and keep selling it at that $25 mark, you're going to make a good amount of money by the end of the month. So moving into the new year on New Year's Day of 2022, which was a Saturday, on Poshmark, I sold this Jimboree dressed up blue floral bow tulle formal dress in a size youth 10. This one sold for $18 with discounted shipping because of Posh VA. And I had $1.50 into that because it was something that I bought from a friend of mine when I bought out her inventory before she moved out of state. So I made a profit on that of $10.44. The next item to sell was this pair of Old Navy Rockstar pull-on jeggings in a size 14 for women. Those sold for $20, which was my full asking price. Again, I bought it from the same friend when I bought out her inventory, so I had $1.50 into those, and I made a profit of $14.50. I do not pick up Old Navy to resell, but this is making me strongly reconsider that because they literally sold within a day. Um, I do think, you know, I've heard a lot of resellers talk about how the rock star jeans especially do really well. And I think the fact that these were in a bigger size too, that's what helped these sell so quickly. I guess that's the secret of Old Navy is if you find their rock star jeans in bigger sizes for cheap, those are worth picking up. On eBay, I sold this pair of Born Brown Leather Croc Print Loafers in a size 7.5. These sold for $19.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I had $1.80 into them because that was a pair of shoes that I picked up at that big bulk buy from the local consignment store. So I made a profit of $14.71. I have had these for over a year and a half, so not a bolo. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari, and it was this vintage game. It was Trivial Pursuit, the RPM edition. It was like a music version, but like old school music. Um, my mother-in-law gave me all this vintage stuff, like, yeah, this game. There were a bunch of vintage books in there. There was like a lot of vintage baseball stuff, like old books that had player stats and I don't know. So I tried listing some of this stuff, tried putting some stuff out to auction. I got no bites. This finally sold on Mercari for $10, giving me a profit of $8.41. 
On Sunday, which was January 2nd, I had a couple Poshmark sales, the first being this pair of Crocs. They were the brown A lay, maybe that's how you pronounce it, open toe wedges in a size 10. These were really cute and honestly, I probably took way too small of an offer on them. Um, someone just kept like lowballing me and finally I was like, I think I had them priced at like $40 and I think they kept sending me like $15, $20 offers. And I mean, I had had them listed for a decent amount of time. So I just ended up selling them to her for $25 with discounted ship. And it was super annoying, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> like it is what it is. So I had $10.90 into those. I believe I got them at a local consignment store and that was my average cost of goods for that trip. So my profit on those was only $6.64. I do still kind of wish I had held out a little bit longer, but it is what it is. You move on and you make better choices next time. The next thing to sell was this Cole Haan Benson 2 to gray leather bucket purse. This was something that we got at Goodwill a couple times ago when we went to the Goodwill outlet in Indianapolis. My friend Chi Won actually found this in the bins and she was so proud of herself, which she should have been because this was a great find. It's all for $55 and I only had $1.66 into it because that was my average cost of goods for that bins trip. And the buyer left me a love note saying she was so happy with the bag and that it was so beautiful. There was considerable wear, especially on the edges, but I just made sure to photograph them and note them in the description and she still was over the moon about this bag which made me really happy and my profit on that bag was $42.34. On Mercari, I sold this pair of Nike black printed athletic activewear shorts in a size extra large. Those sold for $16. That was an offer that I got within I don't know, a few hours of me listing those shorts. I had a dollar and two cents into those because I did another inventory buyout from a different reseller. I have a few videos on that that I will link right here. Um, so my profit on those was $12.62. And my final sale of the last um, a couple weeks was this pair of new with tags, Judy Blue high waisted skinny dark wash jeans in a size three or 26. Those sold for $40. I had originally had them listed for 50, but when I got that $40 offer, I was like, yes, please. Um, they sold again within a day of being listed and I had $18 into those, I believe from a local Plato's closet. So I made a profit of $16.54. Those were kind of interesting in the sense of I had them ready to go to be inventory, like put into one of my little plastic bags and put into my inventory bins. But when I pulled them to put into my inventory, I was like, there's no way that I photographed these and listed them because I didn't remember doing so. So they almost got put away without getting photographed and listed. I'm very glad I was like kind of paying attention to what was going on. Otherwise they would have never sold because they would have never been listed. So make sure you double check before you bag your inventory up that everything has actually been listed. So what I'll do is go over my numbers for that final week. And then we'll talk about the year 2021 and how I did. So so on Poshmark, I sold 19 items for a gross sales amount of $455. Once you factor in shipping and fees, that total drops to $351.15. I had $88.34 as my cost of goods on those 19 items. And so my net sales amount for the week on Poshmark was $262.81. On eBay, I sold eight items for a gross sales amount of $181.69. Once you factor in eBay's fees and any shipping discrepancies, that total drops to $151.39. I had $17.01 as my cost of goods, and so my net profit was $134.38. On Mercari, I made three sales for a gross sales amount of $66. Once you factor in Mercari's fees, that total drops to $56.59. My cost of goods for those three items was $19.02, and I made a net profit of $37.57, which is not very much. It's like half of my gross sales. So in total, I sold 30 items for a gross sales amount of $702.69. Once you factor in fees and shipping, that total drops to $559.13. I had $124.37 as my cost of goods, and so my net profit for the week was $434.76. Again, I missed my weekly goal by almost $200, but I was able to still hit my yearly goal, even though my monthly goal was under. So for the month of December, I made $2,000. $1,149.59 in net 
profit, which is the amount that I actually put in my bank account, which is not bad. My monthly goal in the year of 2021 was 2,500. So I did miss it by a few hundred dollars, but my goal for the year of 2021 was to make $30,000 in net profit as a part-time reseller. And I was able to accomplish that. I actually made $33,000 four hundred seventy two dollars and thirty nine cents in the year of 2021 obviously while that does account for my cost of goods and it does account for all of my platform fees and it does account for shipping it doesn't account for how much i pay for posh or va or how much i pay for list perfectly in order to cross list all of my listings to you know a bunch of different platforms by the way i'll give you my coupon code for that here too um, it doesn't account for shipping supplies it doesn't account for you know all that kind of stuff but subtracting my cost of goods subtracting my fees and shipping I made a net profit of over $33,000 I'm super proud of that I'm going to go ahead and really push myself and set a yearly goal for the year 2022 of $40,000 in net profit. And I think the only way that I'm going to be able to achieve that is not necessarily by listing more because I cannot make more time in my life, but I think it's going to be by sourcing higher end products and being able to just have a higher ASP. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to really do more because I feel like I did about as much as I could do in the year 2021. Like there's not much more I could do with the limited time that I have to resell. So um, that's how my last two weeks of 2021 were. That's how the year 2021 went for me. Let me know down in the comments below, what are your goals for 2021? 2022. What is your yearly goal as far as how much money you want to make in net profit? I'm very curious to see what other resellers are aiming for, especially if you're part-time like me. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up sign so that you can let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!